Okay, I'm just going to give you uh, some of the uh, Perusia Armageddon uh, poetry for restoration of God's love. Um, yeah, at this coronavirus time, um, you know, we our immune systems need to be optimised by reducing stresses on mankind. Um, this collection of poetry is looking at uh, the behaviours and uh, systems that create stress in our bodies and uh, ideally the less stress we have, the more love we have, the more endorphins we have and so we need to conquer these stresses. We need to make them more aware, that there's certainly a lot more aware awareness around them um, but uh, this sort of just says it as it is. <laughs> so uh, God bless and uh, our world certainly needs needs some healing. And um, there we go. I was hoping to uh, be out and uh, being able to see the moon, but it's raining. So there we go. I'm just going to play them on my little, little old-fashioned player. Adam, yeah. Eve and St. Agnes. We will learn war no more, Isaiah 2 4. Oh, what if St. Agnes had been in the Garden of Eden on that fateful day? Could we be living in paradise now? Would we be living in paradise now? Perhaps, just maybe. Could we be positively living with no hurts or pain? Just love and kindness. No jealousy, no crime, no sickness, no shame, no death of love. No death of the positive spirit, no death of joy, no wars, just wonderful counsel, no wars, just princely peace, no wars and eternal parent guiding. What is the point of fighting, all for the same thing anyway, that elusive prize of positive life, peace and love for our loved ones? Do beat your swords into plowshares and your spears into pruning shears, as it is written. Go grow your own paradise and your own food. Grow your own herbs and your own flowers. Learn grace for self-control, autonomy and self-worth. Heal and grow in positive spirit. Love each other as yourself. Love your neighbour and be kind. Love our global neighbours. Give love freely as love takes time. Strong, yet fragile, sacred. One betrayal will burst love's bubble. We become negative and fearful, not able to trust, so never betray, and we can positively live now. O oh, Saint Agnes, where were you that fateful day when mankind positively died? An alliteration of peas for positive peace. Positively perfect, peaceful poems for peaceful protest for peace. Positively perfected, for the people to awaken their passions, for positively living and positively loving and positively pleasing love perfected, for healing pain and promoting pronouncements of perfect peace, for peaceful pleasures, please. Please police the causes of poverty and help the poor to find their positive power perfected by positive love purposefully for positively passionate people, preventing politics promoting poverty and prohibiting privacy with policies creating pain and preying on the poor, preventing their peace by playing with unjust profit for pharmaceuticals to prescribe pills for pseudo-feelings of peace, happiness and pleasure for their profit. Who still prays to the prophets and philosophers for peace like Plato, Peter and Paul? Who practices psalms and proverbs that perfect the paradox of the placebo effect of true faith, which means to positively live with positive love for perfect twofold peace as the goal personified in us? by creating our own pharmaceuticals perfectly present in us as a present. Because today is our present, 
and our present is a present only if and when we are present and life should be pleasant which is pleasantly pleasing for perfection of presence in us in the people physically for perfect physiological functions for perfectly positive psychology of paradise perfected for twofold peace for all people producing priceless pictures of perfection, personified through the passions of the people, it is perfectly possible. Who wants the proof? Armageddon. The world is going mad. The cows have gone mad. The dogs are howling. Women are wailing and men still fighting bloody wars, raging in blood-gaping wounds of torn, decaying flesh. Families, mothers, children and babies. The fallout of sinful egos overheated and fueled by toxic livers full of raging chemical warfare. 2019 so-called life becoming virtual and voyeuristic games of pornographic warfare in sinning cities. The messages of our father forgotten of how love shapes the child, shapes a man and his family, creating positive love or not. Faith, like Abraham and Jacob becoming Israel, climbing the ladder to heavenly healing, creating love through consciousness, which is being forgotten rapidly. Love is being forgotten, falling short, falling short, falling short. The cows have gone mad, women's memories drying up for sex and sexual perversions of loveless sex, leading nowhere but war and conflict in the souls, in the cells, in our cells, in our world reflecting us. Memories growing cancerous breasts of betrayal of love and life, carcinomas of fleshly lust, joined by man boobs, shriveled balls and wilting penises of confusion. Since when do we know better than nature? Since when do we know more than the creator, creating creation, evolving life? Since when do we know more than evolution, creating evolution, creating life? Adaptation. Our cells reacting to what is given to them is how they work. Constant monitoring, constant sensing, constant evaluation of life experiences. And scientists trying to prove what we already know in our hearts. If we listen to our hearts, if we listen to our spirit of love, if we listen to the word of the whole life and organic principles, not the scientists giving complicated names to own our body biochemistry, to own the chemistry within and capitalise on solutions allowing suffering to thrive and prosper for money to selectively control the masses with unauthorised money transfers, paying to talk, paying to drink, paying to breathe, paying for love, for our God, for our God-given right to love. The cows are going mad, being intensely farmed in large chicken cages, pumped with synthetic hormones and antibiotics fattening you and your burger. The pigs are going mad, as they are little more than grunting caged bacon, the barely living egg machines in factories of caged boxes of bruised drumsticks with no arnica. Sheep with no shepherd, bleating on deaf ears, and fish farmed fat, pumped pink, for fucking profit. What are we thinking? What are we feeling? Nothing? Are we numbed and blind to this abuse? Cut off living in denial and plastic wrapped ignorance. Is this abuse of souls okay? To raise a life only for food that poisons us with shame and gluttony and greed, pumped with drugs feeding to our children? To our children, to our children. To raise animals only for food and profit, to deny them their freedom and their life only to kill them and eat them, I vomit at the thought. I vomit at man's ignorance and heartless greed. I vomit at the disrespect for life creating famine for all. 
Love never hurts another. Love is never unkind. Love is not a cortisol. God will vomit. Man means mean choices back with death. Anxiety, depression and death of the happiness we are all seeking. Death of the love, joy and vitality we all yearn for. How can we gain love's spirit with cruelty? Abuse to abuse. Cage the animals to reduce CO2 emissions is madness. The consequences will be death and famine for all. Death of the whole spirit of love. We cannot gain life from sacrificing love. The planet is going mad. The world has gone mad. The soil depleted of natural manures replaced by chemical warfare, killing the soil and growing styrene cancers, making dry bones with plastic foods and rubbery fish drinking oestrogen waters. Parents are going mad. Parents profiting from children in the name of education, educating them to debt and hopelessness, desperate desperation, stress and fear. Schools with bars like prisons and human rights for those who forgot their victims had human rights when they forgot their hue, their loving spirit. Freedom in jail and slavery in the world for utility with no utility. A loss of joy laughter and happiness, when man is being mean, when man is not being gentle and kind. I am here to remind, perhaps inform, that love is not a cortisol. Wake up man and women and all in between before it is too late. Wake up in order to get up and stand on two legs. Do not devolve into sin and hell in your hindbrain by creating your own holograms of fears caged. What holograms taught you fear? Wake up. Stand up to love and abundance of good that is here. Wake up to all that is sustainable with love and positive thoughts. With faith, the assured expectation of good. Wake up before it is too late. Wake up, we are the ones to make this world beautiful and kind. The world is going mad. People are getting mad. The world is going mad. The people are rightly mad. The world is going mad with too much stress on good people. The world is going mad. Love is not a cortisol. Stress hormone crying for an end. The end is nigh. The end, the release of the endorphins. The dopamine, the serotonin, the oxytocin, the anandamide. Finding our blood in marriage with love which is always positive. The endorphin is the end. The end is the beginning of the word endorphin. His love in our blood, the beginning of freedom. The end is the beginning of his promise. For look, I am making all things new. Batter. This poem plays on the word batter. Batter is a food, a hurt, and in the word batteries. Batter works on a lot of levels, humane, food, intimacy, environmental, righteousness, ethics, and morality. Many people and animals eat meat, but surely the animal deserves to have a free range and organic natural and good life in its natural environment. Meat was once a living animal, and that animal deserves a proper life of freedom and its natural foods when it is living. Intensive farming is for maximising profit and disrespectful to the animals supporting all our lives. Animals may not have an articulated voice, but they have intelligence, emotional intelligence, connections and feelings. Surely they deserve a good life of freedom, honour, respect and grace. Battery farm chickens, fish in batter and battery relationships. Acid, poison and death of love. What a shameful battering the world is getting from all types of batter. What a battering to a caged hen, caged women and to the fish and the soil. Battery farms, concentration camps for animals to be abused. A battering to their very existence, a battering to their instincts. Their souls imprisoned and denied freedom, destined to be divided neatly in parts and placed in murderous plastic containers to be chilled. Killed, then chilled. 
how chilling. To be spit roasted or deep fried and packaged neatly again with fries or chips. How can this killing of their souls be stopped? Men without feelings or gall, not being husbands in any way, how can this be acceptable? Abusers battering chickens, fish and women. As for milk, 66p per pint. These wonderful mammals with mammary glands whose bosoms are meant to feed their offspring at least for more than a day. As mammals connect in this way, to bond with love, safety and peace for connection, consciousness of love. Yet calves are dragged away from their mum to be fed by a bucket with super duper growth hormones while their mothers are fed for production of milk, disconnected and separated from their babies. No wonder they go mad. More milk for cheap milk. To disconnect more mammals, taking away the very connections a loving creator has made for a beautiful, connected, loving world. The connections allowing mothers to be with their children emotionally, consciously, with positive, loving and compassionate emotions for a positive life for us and the animals, for all mammals. Aren't husbands supposed to look after their wife and family? Aren't farmers supposed to be husbands to their animals? To love, to look after, to protect, for better, not worse. For better, not better. Has anyone thought of using pigs and chickens for ploughing a field? They can roam and fertilise at the same time and don't need diesel. Organic, economical, profitable, happy animals, happy farmers and still lots of eggs. Of course, everyone gains by the good life. Free the animals and people from the cages. Caged. Are you happy living in a box? Four walls with no garden. Four walls with a cream ensuite bathroom and 66 inch TV with surround sound. Are you happy living with the sex and money gods? Living with fantasy, idolatry, pornography? Will you be happy with the sex machines? Are you happy with stress, anxiety and fear? Living against the laws of love and nature? Are you happy the greed has put you in a box? Keeps you in a box and dangles temptation for all your wants and desires the greed has stolen? I am not happy denatured from my garden. I am not happy removed from fields of green with chickens scurrying, horses and cows grazing and pigs turning the soil. I am not happy denatured from nature. I am not happy denatured from natural living close to green lands and sea. I am not happy consuming plastic as if a slothful meal. I am not happy consuming chemicals sold as foods. I am not happy caged and doled out pills that will never cure the ailments of sin. I am not happy being depressed by confinement of my soul. Are you? Dilemma. Being woman, a man with a womb, created from Adam's rib. Genetic engineering. Or did Adam forget who his mother was? Maybe she died in childbirth. Maybe she was denied because she was a woman. We don't know. We don't hear of her. Perhaps a life sacrificed for a life. Something women do, sacrifice their lives and needs for others in the greater circle of life that is fast becoming a triple six of selfish indulgence. Respect and elders forgotten. Children lost in screens and farmed out whilst mum sits in an office as well as dad to pay the overpriced mortgage for our right for somewhere to live. Surely we have a right for somewhere to live. Aching, dreaming and wishing she was home with her children, playing with dough, showing them how to make bread, whilst making shapes and squidging the dough through a sieve to make spaghetti worms, hair to cut whilst the dough rises. Something for her and her children to experience and laugh and play with while they knead and make and bake the bread. Instead, now she shops online, and the bread is delivered in a plastic bag. In a plastic bag with another plastic bag with other plastic bags. She feels guilt as she puts more plastic in the bin, 
and worries about plastic pollution and the sea life, the seals and whales and birds dying with plastic food in their stomachs. She worries about the phthalates, altering hormones and the chemtrails in the sky and global warming. She tidies the house again and cleans the lavatory again before going to work again, stuck in a traffic jam again. Sometimes she cries because she cares. Sometimes she cries because she is so tired, so tired, so tired, too tired, so tired. The plastic age. Crude, crude oil. Skeletons, trees and life from times gone by. Decomposed matter becoming dark, dense, black goo. That is sucked out from our Earth's all-rich rocks through miles and miles of metamorphosed mineral or moulded plastic pipes. To iron rigs for iron transporters to transport transoceans, to ports for the insatiable modern world to be transformed and transforming, homo sapiens creating and moulding new to infiltrate every aspect of life. Crude, crude oil, refined into petrol, PVC, fleeces and synthetic furs, the art of mimicry, even our estrogens affecting us. The plastic age almost escapes atrophy and defies ageing defiantly. Bags, bags and more bags, containers to contain anything alive and dead. Once useful, then carelessly discarded, contents consumed ravenously. How can our miraculous planet Earth sustain this abuse? We have the duty to nurture nature to plant and water seeds for fruition of foods and beauty. We can make Eden if we want to. It is our choice to abandon or nurture, love and care or use and abuse. Like everything in life, we can make the difference if we choose to. What the Fox Says Bags, bags and more bags. I am very tired, say the bags under my eyes, sleepily. I earn five bags a day, says the professional footballer, unbelievably. I am a money bag, says the wags designer, hand bags and bags and bags and bags. And I am environmental poison, says the big black bag of festering rubbish. Yummy is what the fox says. Scrummy is what the rat says. I am disgusting, says the little black bag of dog fowl dangling off a tree branch. I am toxic to you and the planet, says the plastic bag. I can suffocate, strangle and kill. So can I, says the stubbed out fag. But I don't, says the paper bag. I am not toxic or environmentally cruel. I am made from trees which are life-giving, sustainable health for people and the planet, and there I return by compost or ash, not trash. Is it really rocket science which to cultivate, say the wags? I am tired of trying, say the weary bags under my eyes. I cannot go on with so much grief. Never mind, says the surgeon. Let's just cut them out and everything will look fine. He deposits his bags and bags of, ooh, bags of money, say the bankers, one for you and lots for me. I am hungry, says the empty bag inside the starving children, and food bags are not the answer. Games of hunger. Careless power games, hungry games of power. That internal asking question, deep inside their core, aching, screaming, crying for something to alkalise the acid, burning the hole that erodes the essence of life. Food, glorious food, the right of every living being, realising the potential of Hippocrates' words, 
let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. For healing and sustaining life, switching on the bright lights of the soul, light energy, the life force within. Though not by bread alone, there is darkness in only white bread. When empty food poisons the soul, being fatally controlled by invisible powers of wanton desire, that be fat cats who don't know no care nor grace. Remember Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist. He and Nancy ask not only for more, but where is love? Where is the love that cares? Cares for the broken child, the orphan child, the battered wife of the wayward husband. Where is the love that fulfills us with love and fills our souls? fills the black acid hole of hunger with nutritious food? Where is the love that fills loneliness with friendship, that makes us whole in spirit, being able to fruit love, joy, peace and happiness? Where is the love from the words that feed us all medicinal, nourishing food? The love that does not allow hunger. Time to heed. Money, money, money. Bye bye sell. Dow Jones, FTSE 100. How exciting. What fun. Nine to one. Odds on favourite. Bull or bear. Do you care? Wow. What a profit. Here's a few million. A billion. A trillion. And as the money flows, the fever grows and flowers bloom for some. Yet down below, the flowers can't grow. They are a luxury, second to food. For the mood is depression. Struggle to pay the bills. Pop the anti-stress pills, but who says this is okay? Who allows this greed to breathe? It is time to heed. There is no need for greed, heed now, or breed contempt and strife, because our youth is rife with debt, burden and despair, instead of faith, hope and a life that's fair. Working women, burdened by duty, love and loyalty to their husband and children, their family, work and homes till breaking point. Hardly any time to sit and smell the roses, to see their fruits rotting or ripening. Wives and women struggling against men and media, struggling against lawlessness, losing values that make society beautiful and wholesome. Homes becoming hostels to sleep between work and chores. Unhappy, stressed out women can become bores. Some even trafficked as whores. Stressed homes, stressed families, stressed communities break. Stressed couples break up. Stressed individuals break down. Perversions of life are born like stress and porn. Where love cannot dwell with stress and fear, happiness smiles and contentment on hold, peace, fulfilment and harmony ever elusive. Sins and vices, sold as naughty but nices. Techno devices, drip-feeding desires to sell, sell, sell excitement. Sex, violence, affairs and murders. The stuff of drama that makes up stress, depression, impotence and crime. Where man is enslaved again and again because he won't listen to the messages of pain. Love is not a cortisol. Portrait of a Northern Landscape Maybe because she knows the terrain, she sees clearly in the dark. Rain lashes, black thunder roars, lightning strikes her heart. Heavy fog blurs the view. The mountains are too vast to climb. The seas are too rough to sail. There is no sunshine. How long till the tornado passes? till she sees the porpoises playing purposefully again. There is the sound of a vicious earthquake. A wave too big to surf gains momentum, quaking she can't look and he can't see her. He manoeuvres his ship expertly to dock in the green land where there is no grass. No one to help her on this dark, dark day. He hops triumphantly onto dry land, in time for a jovial pint, leaving his vessel laden, heavy with tears in the cold, cold north. How how long till the lifeboat comes? So uh, I'm just about to uh, run out of video time. So uh, that is 
um, the first part of the uh, Perusia Armageddon collection. Uh, and it then goes on into looking at um, um, coercive control and various forms of of abuse and uh, toxicity within the body, within the liver, um, and um, looking at injustice in the world, looking at the wars, and then also introducing the, the healing consciousness of the uh, crystals, uh, the gemstones actually, cited at Revelation 21. Um, and so looking at repentance, turning around and uh, conquering stress and fear um, that can make us defensive and cause conflict at uh, every level. So whether that's in, in the home or in the world with wars. So it's all looking at attaining to the, the peace to, be, to allow the healing to uh, return the body, to take the body out of that sympathetic stress response, causing the adrenaline and cortisols turning around back to the love, to the endorphin love, because the end is the beginning of the word. Endorphin is love in our blood. And we're at that time for consciousness for healing now so uh, I don't think anybody can deny that so yeah seek and we will find <laughs> god bless and uh, I'll uh, put some more up soon thank you Jesus Christ is returning for healing all nations and heaven on earth through the oneness of love cultivated and manifested in us for healing all nations out of every language and tongue. God bless.